Hello, today we have Dr. Chris Schaber, CEO of Sologenics, trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol SNGX. Chris, thanks for being back. Thanks for having me, Craig. Good to see you again. Good to see you. You recently reported top line results from that phase 2A study in psoriasis patients. Chris, what can you tell us about the results and how big is the market opportunity for this therapy? Given that psoriasis is a difficult to treat chronic skin cancer with no cure, characterized by patches or thick plaques on the body, the ongoing SGX302 Phase 2A trial is an early phase fact-finding study in mild to moderate psoriasis patients. In this study, we are looking to learn as much as possible about key parameters, such as patient characteristics, optimal drug dose, and duration of treatment. I am pleased to say that so far, we are continuing to demonstrate some promising results in this small pilot study. SGX302, or synthetic hyperacin, the active ingredient, has not only demonstrated that it has biologic activity in this disease, but is also showing some early evidence of clinical success in impacting key efficacy markers in the second cohort of evaluable patients. Two of those patients reached a disease status of almost clear, represented by what is called an investigator global assessment score of one, which is considered the standard clinical measure for treatment success in psoriasis. In addition, the psoriasis activity and severity index score, another well-characterized measure of treatment success for patients in the second cohort at a mean drop of approximately 50% over a 18-week treatment period. Just as important uh, as uh, the key endpoints, SGX302 therapy was well tolerated by all patients with no drug-related adverse events identified. So, as you would imagine, we remain cautiously optimistic that SGX302 can serve a meaningful potential role in mild, mild to moderate psoriasis, which is a very large market opportunity in excess of $1 billion worldwide. Chris, turn now to Bichette's disease, where Sologenics is also active. You have recently received investigational new drug clearance from the Food and Drug Administration for a phase two trial in Bichette's. What can you tell us about the program and what milestones should investors expect in 2024? Bichette's is another chronic disease with no cure as well. It's an orphan disease, so much smaller. It's characterized by ulceration of the mucous membranes and skin, with up to 18,000 people in the U.S. and as many as 1 million people worldwide affected by this incurable disease. In this disease, we are developing another molecule, SGX945, which is the research name, or Dusquetide, to treat the aphoas ulcers in a phase 2A study. This study is set to begin later this year, probably in the second half, and we should have results in early 2025, the first half. The market opportunity here for SGX945 in this orphan disease is uh, as much as 200 million globally. Chris, you're always so enthusiastic when talking to us here at Redship about upcoming milestones. Now share it with our audience. In the next 12 to 18 months, what can we expect? In addition to the SGX945 phase 2A trial in Bichette's, potential investors can expect more clinical data coming from the phase two study in psoriasis with SGX302 over the next 12 to 18 months. And importantly, we are working towards final regulatory agreement on our second confirmatory phase three trial with Hybrate in the treatment of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma or CTCL, a rare and chronic skin cancer, where we've already achieved positive and statistically significant clinical results in the first phase three clinical trial. Assuming timely agreement on a feasible design, we, we, we could be initiating this second phase three study with Hybrate later this year as well. In addition, we also remain active in our heat stable vaccine programs under our public health solutions business segment and expect potentially to have more data available with these programs as well. Maybe one last note, Craig, we also remain active on the business development front and are currently looking at all strategic options. While I can't make any promises or commitments here, I will say that we are active and in a number of discussions. Turning now to Highbright again, an article on Highbright was recently published in Frontiers in Drug Discovery. 
That article emphasized the ability of Hybrite to address the unmet medical need in patients with early stage cutaneous T cell lymphoma. Can you recap for us, Chris, the previous phase three results for Hybrite? And can you give us an update on the upcoming confirmatory pivotal phase three study? Of course. At a high level, in the first phase three study with Hybrite and CTCL, we demonstrate a statistically significant improvement in reducing the size of the cancerous patches or plaques on the skin after a short treatment of just six weeks with Hybrite. Importantly, the longer we treated, the more robust the response, demonstrating overwhelming statistically significant reductions in skin lesions after 12 and 18 weeks of treatment. As you noted, these results are published, so if anyone would like to get more details, I would urge you to go to our corporate website where there is a great deal of information available here. Regarding an update on the second confirmatory phase three trial, as I noted earlier, we are in discussions with both the FDA and MA on trial designs for the second confirmatory trial with Hybrite. And assuming timely agreement on a feasible design, we could be initiating this second phase three trial with Hybrite later this year. Again, having previously demonstrated this drug's profound effect in treating this disease, CTCL, in the first phase three study conducted. Chris, the floor is yours to give us that essential value proposition. Tell our investors, why should they take an interest in Sologenics right now? We've covered a lot of it during this short interview. Sologenics is a late clinical stage biopharmaceutical company focused on developing and commercializing therapies to treat orphan diseases and areas of unmet medical need. Given our pipeline is later stage with multiple clinical programs in phase two and phase three development, we have a number of shots on goal that provides a level of de-risking to our portfolio. Not that Sologenics is without risk, but reduced risk given that we demonstrated results in a number of trials and disease indications. A further note, we also work to manage our cash burn very carefully and have cash runway that currently takes us into the fourth quarter of this year. Always great speaking with you, Dr. Shaber. Thanks again for being with us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.